If you ask people to name some publicly listed stocks, they'd be likely to come up with the same sorts of companies. Amazon, Apple, Facebook and so on. But the vast majority of stocks listed on stock markets around the world you've probably never heard of. Here's Dr. Tim Edwards from S&P Dow Jones Indices. So there's about um, 11,000 stocks worldwide that are listed. Um, the biggest single market is the US with around 4,000 stocks. Um, and the distribution of sizes there um, is really, really broad. So there's a small select few that are very, very big. Uh, and then there's a very, very long tail. Uh, there's much more companies that are a half, a quarter, a hundredth as large, um, all the way down to uh, companies that are perhaps a million or a couple of million in valuations. Uh, they're also listed on the exchange. There's academic evidence to show that it makes sense for investors to have exposure to mid-cap and small-cap stocks in addition to so-called mega-stocks. Simply put, smaller companies have more potential for growth. You can get a lot of the equity, what they call the equity risk premium, i.e. a return from investing in the stock markets. You can get a lot of that by just focusing on large companies. Uh, and in fact, because there are some that are so large, they actually capture a lot of the overall market. However, um, if you're interested in companies that have better growth prospects, um, then you might need to look beyond the largest. So Apple is currently the largest uh, member of the S&P 500. And I pick it because over the last 20 years, it has had been an astonishing success story. Its return is over 100 times that of the benchmark in that period. Uh, the S&P 500 went up just over three times, Apple just over 30,000 times. Now, well done, Apple. Um, is it possible that that could happen again in the future? It's almost impossible that it'll happen to what's already the largest company. But among one of those smaller companies, that may very well be one of those success stories. Despite the case for diversifying across different sizes of stocks, most investors tend to focus on the largest ones. European investors are particularly biased towards them. If you look at European fund investors, they have almost no exposures to stocks in the mid and small cap space. The vast majority is in this S&P 500 space. Um, now, part of that could be because of a lack of expertise, a lack of opportunity. There's a lot more, it's a lot easier to invest in a large cap fund. Um, but that is changing, and I think ETFs have played a big role in that. And nowadays you have potentially quite liquid, quite easy, quite low cost ways to, to invest in mid and small caps, not just in the US, but, but across the world. So I, I expect it to change, um, but certainly as we look at it right now, um, many investors, when they invest internationally, will focus on the large cap space, uh, and that may not be um, taking advantage of the full opportunity set they have. In short, large cap index funds are a sensible investment over the long term. But you might do better by investing in smaller companies as well.